I wanted you to sort of start by telling me how you got into it, how you started the collection. I know there's kind of a story there. Sure. Um, years ago, my parents had passed away, and I started to collect toys. And I had a sort of an emotional experience with them, and then I started collecting from toys to video games, and it went to board games, then it went to books, and then I got to a point where I thought, let's do something with it, and let's you know, let me first apply for the Guinness Book World Records because I thought I was a shoe in I had over 40,000 items of 80s memorabilia and they denied me saying that my collection was too general and if I wanted I can resubmit a claim based on most um, roller skates or most cereal boxes but I can't do it all together. So I got to be in my bonnet because I don't like to take no for an answer and I took to social media and I raised awareness that way and I started to create a massive following. Uh, how did you get into 80s memorabilia? Like, what, what is it about 80s in particular that you connect with? Uh, I think being a child, and I think um, back then with my parents and having a family still, and you know, after they all passed away, I just had a good feeling about um, childhood items. And um, for, from that, point I just started collecting them and I thought it felt really good and then I noticed that when I would show this stuff to other people my age they really enjoyed it as well and so it became like a reminiscence type of activity and it sort of went from there. So was there a sort of a starting point for the collection? Yes, um, when I was at a flea market which at the point I wasn't into anything in particular there was a Care Bear that I came across and I remember this one from when I was a kid. My parents bought me it, and I asked the woman, she was a little elderly one, uh, lady, and I said, how much for it? And she said, 10 bucks. And she's like, do you want the other ones? And I said, yeah, sure. So I bought a few of them, and I took them home, and I put them on my shelf, and it made me feel good for a moment. And then from there, we collected more. <laughs> there you go. All right, so, um, wait, so you went to a flea market not for 80s nostalgia. No, I went because my sister like was just walking in the area and I just went with her or right. it was a friend or something and, and and to me I'm actually a minimalist. I don't I was born without this stuff. I'll die without this stuff other than the emotional connection I have with it. I, I really don't like I will sell this collection all at once and move on with my life. But until then, my job is to preserve the 80s and to educate them on the history of it. So what are the sort of categories of things that you've got? Toys, uh, board games, video games, school supplies, fast food items, clothing, electronics, household items, magazines, TV guides, Avon catalogs, jewelry. I don't think there's a category that I don't have. Favorite, uh, rarest, most expensive thing in the category. Like, these are three different categories. Yeah, um, favorite would be the McDonald's cookie display behind the counter when you would get the cookies, they were in a little, um, looked like a chute, and you would order the cookie and then in the box from McDonald's land. And I have, I have the entire, there's like 20 unopened boxes of cookies in the, in the display, which it wouldn't fit in my house. <laughs> it's, it's in storage. What's the rarest thing? There are a lot of them. Um, I wouldn't say rare as far as a huge collector piece that's worth a lot of money. I would just say rare in terms of how scarce it is on the market. Like something like a hair dryer from 1981, something like a coffee pot from 1983. I think those little items add up that are just very rare that no one has them physically anymore. You'd have to look into an archive. What is the most expensive thing? I would probably say, collectively, my Nintendo collection, from the video games, the cartridges, to the boxes, to the systems, to the Nintendo Power magazines, collectively, that might be worth four or five thousand altogether if you added them all up. How much do you think my mustache is worth? Two fifty. Wow, That's wait, what... wait, two, two dollars, <laughs> wait, I don't know, is this, is this two bucks, 50, 250, um, 250,000? All right, if we're looking at 80s inflation, it's worth 250. Yes. I'm, I'm... <laughs> is there one thing in this collection you get asked about the most? That's a very good question. Um, like, what comes up? Like, all right, you're doing a live stream, someone comes by, someone tweets at you, whatever. 
Is there a commonality? Is there something that is the most likely thing you get a question about? Uh, action figures. The especially on Instagram, they love. See, it's different. Social medias are very different in terms of what the fans want. I've noticed on Instagram, they're really big on toys and dolls. Uh, they want GI Joe figures. They want Voltron and Thundercats. They want Barbie dolls. And then on Twitter. You got more, I want to see movies, I want to see records and vinyls. Facebook, they like school supplies. They, they like books and, and school supplies and a few fast food items. And I try to mix it up for everyone. I try to give something of, uh, to make everyone happy, but I'm never going to make everyone happy. So I'm just going to give a little and, and you know, keep it for everyone.